All right, let's wrap this up. We'll take some lessons from other nations, see how they responded to the disease, as well as what impact it's had on them. First, I want to talk about reducing R0. The faster that we can reduce R0, the better. Shown on the right here is a scenario of if we reduce R0 linearly to zero, but if we are really fast about it versus being really slow about it. This blue one is what will happen if we, do, if we reduce R0 from two down to zero over a period of one month, whereas this yellow one is what will happen if we, if we reduce R0 from two down to zero over a period of four months. And as you can see, the peak number of infections could be a couple hundred thousand, or it could be almost three million. The longer that we take to reduce R0, the more infections that there will be, and the more likely we are to overwhelm the medical system. As a result, in order to be effective, our response has to be swift. So let's take some lessons from China. The outbreak began in China, in Wuhan, in the Hubei province, most likely from a seafood market. The government originally fumbled and tried to hide the outbreak. On January 23, with 650 confirmed cases in the country, the government placed Hubei province on total lockdown, causing R0 to start reducing. So January 23 is right here. And it wasn't until 12 days later that the official case count started to slow. And that's because of the delay time between when someone contracts the disease and when they test positive for it. The outbreak rapidly overwhelmed their medical system. Makeshift hospitals were constructed while people died in the streets. And infected people under quarantine died without medical assistance. Subsequently, however, the efforts within China appear to be successful. A majority of the Chinese population was placed on lockdown, and the disease spread has essentially stopped. Things seem to be largely under control again. This has, of course, been incredibly disruptive to the Chinese economy. A lot of activity and personal mobility is still under lockdown. Italy also had a delayed response before demanding social distancing in their population. Even with social distancing and quarantine encouraged, many people took the opportunity to visit friends for dinner and host trivia nights. Many of them flooded into crowded supermarkets without mask or aerosol protection and contracted disease there. Now they're hurting. They've had riots in 27 prisons and 50 prisoners escaped and they've had to lock down the entire country. They've exceeded their medical system's capacity, and now they're treating patients in the hallways of their hospitals. They've begun making decisions on which patients will be lucky enough to receive ventilators and which ones won't. Iran, which is a travel hub for religious purposes, basically denied the presence of the disease for weeks until people started dying in droves and numerous government officials contracted it. Two dozen members of parliament, or about 8%, and a vice president have contracted the, the virus, and a couple senior government officials have died. Satellite imagery has indicated construction of mass graves, indicating that the fatalities may well exceed the official count of 500. Now, Taiwan is a really interesting case. Because they're so close to China and they have lots and lots of flights, millions of flights every year between Taiwan and China, as well as having political disadvantages. Taiwan was not permitted to get inside information from the World Health Organization on the progress of the disease. Taiwan was expected to, to fare very poorly. However, they were prepared. Taiwan was skeptical and cautious and they immediately instituted travel inspections, ramped production of face masks, employed big data analytics, proactively tested and quarantined people, and provided food, health checks, and encouragement for those under quarantine. Their vice president, who's an epidemiologist, provided regular public service announcements to educate the public on hygiene, the use and reuse of face masks, and the dangers of hoarding. As a result of these measures, 
Taiwan has maintained almost an R0 of zero, resulting in a very slow linear growth of cases, not exponential, which are primarily from Taiwanese citizens who were overseas and were repatriated. In other words, the spread of the disease inside Taiwan has been essentially nil. South Korea has also had a pretty good track record. I will say though, they suffered from a really unusual super spreader event within a local religious cult that caused an explosion in infections of several thousand infections early on. Since then though, they've set up drive-through testing centers across the nation with a capacity to test 20,000 samples every day, making it convenient for citizens to get tested and receive results within six hours. By contrast, in the US, we've tested 11,000 people to date, period. Not per day, to date. In South Korea, social distancing, wearing masks, thermal imaging ca uh, cameras at the entrances to, ma to major buildings, and hygiene public service announcements have allowed them to reduce R0 to around zero without shutting down their open society. You can see that by looking at the number of cases. They had an explosion in cases initially because of that super spreader event, but since then their cases have been really tapering off. So how do we measure up? So far, not very well. The disease growth within the United States has been exponential with an R0 growth rate of about two. And a lot of this is because of a cavalier attitude that we've had toward the disease, as well as confusing and inaccurate information from the government and low testing rates that resulted in uncontrolled community spread. As a result of low responsiveness from the government, a lot of companies have taken it on themselves to implement social distancing policies, such as work from home policies, and to cancel events and meetings, which should help reduce R0. Finally, after several months, the government has finally begun to recognize the severity of the disease, which will hopefully help. Still, we're looking at some rough times ahead. Due to data lag, it'll take over a week to know how effective our measures are. To summarize, this disease is serious and we need to act swiftly and aggressively to limit its spread in order to prevent further economic disruption, medical system overload, and deaths. As citizens, it's our responsibility to reduce our not by practicing good hygiene, social distancing, and wearing and reusing masks without interfering with the medical system's response. To avoid stressing the supply chain for the medical professionals who desperately need them, do not hoard masks. If you don't have one, ask for one from somebody who has them. If you have spares, give them to people who need them more than you do. Keep two weeks supply of food in case you need to be quarantined. If you're sick, stay at home, rest, and cough or sneeze into your elbow or into a tissue and throw it away disinfect very frequently to avoid spreading the disease. Don't panic, but don't be complacent. This is not a drill and lives are at stake. And here are some excellent resources that I highly recommend that you go and check out.